Hello and welcome back to Data Structures in JavaScript. Today we are covering binary search trees. What are they, why are they useful, and how do we implement them? To understand the binary search tree, we should first go over the tree data structure. A tree is a collection of elements that have links to each other that, when visualized, looks like a tree that you see in nature, although upside down. Unlike the array or linked list, which are linear data structures, the tree is hierarchical or nonlinear. Each element in the tree is called a node, which similar to the linked list has two pieces of information, the data value itself and a pointer that references other nodes. There is one specific starting node called a root node. These nodes below it are its child nodes, which would make the root node its parent node. Child nodes can have their own child nodes and so on and so on. It is possible for a node to be both a child and a parent at the same time. Two child nodes that are next to each other are called siblings, and any node that does not have a child is a leaf node. Now, a binary tree is a type of tree where each node has a maximum of two immediate children. It is possible for the nodes to have one child or no children, which would make it a leaf node, but they can never have more than two. In a binary tree, these two child nodes are referred to as the left child and the right child. A binary search tree is a type of binary tree that naturally stays sorted because it follows this rule. Every left child must always be less than its parent, and every right child must always be greater than its parent. A BST is balanced when its left and right subtrees have roughly the same amount of nodes, although not necessarily exactly the same amount. If the left and right side of a BST had the exact same amount of nodes, that would make it a perfect tree, which is actually quite rare. In its worst case scenario, a BST can be so unbalanced that it becomes a degenerate tree, which is actually a linked list. And yes, a linked list is a type of tree. There also are self-balancing binary search trees, such as red-black trees and AVL trees. So why are BSTs useful? Well, if you wanted to retrieve an element from the tree, each time you head down one path of the tree, either the left or the right side, you are discarding about half of the tree. This allows us to find elements very quickly. So in this example, if we wanted to find element number four, we would first start at the root node and compare. Four is less than 20, so we go left. We just discarded the entire right half of the tree. Now we compare again and we see 4 is less than 17, so we go left again. Once again, we just discarded the entire right half of this subtree. And now we have arrived at 4 without having had to check every single other node in the tree. Binary search trees are extremely fast for insertion, for deletion, and for accessing any element, even at large sizes. Another advantage is that binary search trees naturally stay sorted, so it is easy to get all of their elements out in sequence. So how do we implement the binary search tree? Well, buckle up because this is gonna be a long, long code along. Like, seriously, pause the video and go get yourself a cookie or a cup of tea or something, because you deserve it. So before we jump into the code, I just wanna preface this by saying there are lots of ways to implement the BST, but I'm just gonna write something that I personally find easier to reason about. One tip that I wanna give is that when you're working with BSTs for the first time, or just in general really, I find it super helpful to draw the BST so you can visualize the data you're working with. I also recommend using a lot of console logs and or a debugger because BSTs involve a lot of recursion. So it's really helpful to see what your code is processing at every step of the way. Okay, so let's begin with our node class. We will have a constructor which takes in a value and we'll keep track of three properties. So we'll have the value itself and a left pointer and a right pointer. Moving on to the BST class, we have class BST with a constructor that also takes in a value and we'll keep track of the root node which we're just gonna set to a new node, new node with value value. And we'll also keep track of this dot count set to zero at first. 
and that'll just keep track of how many nodes are in the tree. Next, we'll scaffold out all our methods. So we'll have a size, an insert, min, max, contains, and some searching algorithms. So we'll start with our depth first search, which comes in three flavors. There is in order, pre-order, and post-order. We'll also include the breadth first search. Okay, so let's begin with size. That is simply returning this stop count. The insert method will take in a value. It will increment this stop count and it will create a new node with the value passed in. Let new node equal new node value. So if we want to insert a value, we want to compare it first with the root node check if it's less than or greater than. If it's less, we'll go left, and if it's more, we'll go right. And we wanna do this comparison check for every node that we come across, not just the root node. So I'm going to implement a recursive search function that calls itself when we see another node. Hopefully this will make a little more sense once I code it out. So const search tree takes in a node. And we want to check to see if the value that we're passing in to our insert function is less than or greater than the node we're looking at. If value is less than node.value, go left. And if the value is greater than the node.value, go right. So now we want to consider two situations. If we're on a node and we look to our left and there is no node there, we can just append that value at that position. If there is already an existing node there, we want to look left again to see if there's an open space. So in this conditional here, if there's no left child, we can just append the new node there. If there is a left child, we call search tree again. So this is the recursive case. Now, if the value we're passing in is greater than the node.value, it's a similar pattern. So we're checking if there is or is not a right node. So if that right child space is free, let's just append the new node there. If there is a node at that right child position, then we want to call search tree again and look right once again. Now, while we're still inside of the insert method, we want to call search tree on the root node. Now the min and max methods are a little bit simpler. So if we want to get the minimum value out of the binary search tree, all we do is start at the root and then go left and left and left and left until there are no more child nodes. So basically we've reached that last leaf node on the leftmost side of the tree. So basically we're just going to traverse through the tree, but only going left. Let's create a variable for the current node we're looking at. So let current node equal this dot root. Now we'll use a while loop to traverse through the tree. So while current node. So while there exists a left child node, let's look left. So current node will equal current node dot left. So now you're just setting the current node to its left child over and over and over again until finally we break out of the while loop and then we can just return the current node value. The max method has the exact same logic, but just going right instead of left. So it's the same while loop. The only difference is we're looking at the right child instead of the left child. So contains takes a value and checks whether it exists in the tree. 
So we'll start with a variable that stores the node we're currently looking at. So let current node equal this dot root. And once again, we'll use a while loop to traverse through the tree. So while current node. If the value passed in is equal to the current node's value, we have found the value so we can just return true. Otherwise, we need to keep searching. So if the value is less than the current node's value, we want to look left. So we'll set the current node to equal current node dot left. Else, if the value is greater than the current node's value, we're just going to go right. So current node equals current node dot right. If we traverse through the entire tree and exit this while loop, and we never find the value, we're just going to return false. Now we've made it to the search algorithms. Let's say we wanted to implement this BST. If we wanted to do an in-order death first search, what we want to do is process the left node first, then the root node, and then the right node for the entire tree. And once we process every node in this particular order, they print out in order. For the pre-order death first search, we will look at the root node, then the left node, then the right node. We repeat this process for every node in the tree, and we expect to return the values in this order. For the post-order death first search, we will process the left node, then the right node, then the root node. We expect this method to return these values in this order. Now you might be wondering what the difference between the breath first search and the death first search is. So the death first search is looking branch by branch, while the breath first search is looking level by level. For the breath first search, we're going to be using a queue, and we expect this to return all the values by level. So starting with the in order death first search, Let's initialize a result array. So we'll let result equal an array, and then we'll return that result. So similar to the insert method from earlier, we are going to use a nested recursive function. Const traverse, take in a node. As we have in our note up here, we process the left node, then the root node, then the right node. So if there is a left node, we want to traverse the tree again. So traverse node.left. Then we process the root node. And then if there is a right node, we want to traverse the tree again, looking to the right. So pre-order and post-order have very, very similar logic. So we will initialize a result array, return the result, and then we'll use a recursive traverse function inside it to push values into the result array. So I can actually copy and paste this logic from up here, but just switch the order. So I'll take this and move that up here to follow the note that we've written. We're going to the root first, then the left, then the right. Finally, with post order, once again, I'm literally just gonna copy and paste this logic and switch around the values. So we've got left, right, and then root. So we'll take these two lines of code and move them to the end. So it follows left, right, and root. We finally arrived at the breath first search. So I just wanna reiterate the tip I gave out earlier, which is to use lots of console logs and visuals, especially when you're working with these search algorithms. So the breath first search was personally the hardest for me to reason about, so yeah, use lots of console logs and draw things out. Much like with the death first searches, we're going to initialize a result array. So let result equal an array, and we'll return the result. We will be using a queue to help us out, so let queue equal an array. Now we're going to push the root node into the queue. While the queue has stuff in it, so queue.length, let current node equal queue.shift. So it's just gonna take that first item out of the queue. Then we result.push the current node. 
So we've just taken that current node out of the queue and pushed it into our result array. Now, if the current node has left children, we want to push that left child node into the queue. Then if the current node has a right child, we'll push that right child node into the queue. Let's test it. So we'll pass in 15 as our root node, and I'm just going to implement the BST as we have it in our handy dandy visualization. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got our root node with the value of 15. The root has a left node with three and a right node with 36. And it has six nodes in the tree. Although that is not right at all because there are seven nodes in the tree. So sorry everyone, we should have initialized this dot count to equal one. Let's look at it again. Awesome, it's got seven nodes. BST dot size now returns the correct size. The BST dot min we expect to return two. Awesome. And the BST dot max we expect to return 39. Yeah. Next we'll test our contains method. So BST dot contains two returns true. BST dot contains nine is false. Now let's check if our def first searches work. So I'm just going to copy over the notes that we wrote up here. So these are our expected values for all of our def first searches. So let's test our in order def first search and see if it returns the values we expect. Oh my God, why? A few moments later. You guys, I'm so careless. For the DFS in order, forgot to call the recursive traverse method that we worked so hard to write. So we'll call traverse on this dot root, and let's not forget to paste that throughout our def first searches. Sorry to all of you at home that are coding along with me. We're all going through this process together. DFS in order is returning the correct values. Awesome. Let's try again with our, whoops, pre-order. Forgive all my mistakes today. I'm so sorry. It's like, it's 11.30 at night as I'm recording this. So pre-order, pre-order is returning the expected values. I just didn't copy paste them correctly. Cool, man. So pre-order is actually working correctly. For post-order, working perfectly. Now let's look at our breadth first search. What did I do this time? Okay, forgive me, one more little mistake. I wanna push the current node's value into the result array, not the entire node. Okay, fingers crossed. Yeah, awesome. Cool, our depth first search and breadth first search are all working. And that is how you implement the BST. In summary, we learned about trees, which are hierarchical, nonlinear data structures. Binary trees are a type of tree where each node has a maximum of two children. Binary search trees are a type of binary tree where each left child node is always less than its parent node and each right child node is always greater than its parent node. Because of this, their data naturally stays sorted. BSTs are extremely beneficial when you need to access and process large amounts of ordered data in a very fast manner, although at the expense of some memory overhead. Finally, we learned how to implement BSTs and some different methods of traversing them. There is the depth first search, which is branch by branch and comes in three different flavors pre-order, in-order, and post-order. And there is the breadth first search, which is level by level. And that wraps up today's video on binary search trees, and this concludes this series on data structures in JavaScript. If you found this helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Let's look at it again. Awesome, it's got seven nodes.
by Ariana Grande. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Moving on. So if value, oh, my dog is dreaming. Oh my god, that's so cute! <laughs>